This is Radar from the Radar Tape Blog coming at you with another edition of MLB Observations Hot Stove Week 8 of the 2023 season. It just ended going into this year's 2024 season. Nationals signed Lewin Diaz to Miley Deal, and as I keep saying, Joey Manessas is either going to play first base or DH, so you can just keep signing these guys who can split time with him, maybe. I'm happy to hear that Alex Dickerson, after playing, you know, independent ball, and I think in Central America this year, after representing Team Israel because his wife was Jewish, and I didn't know that, and I applaud his effort of playing for Team Israel, got a deal in Japan, and as I mentioned, a lot of times, Japan, Japanese baseball teams and other leagues would love to give money to guys who used to play in the big leagues because that draws people to the ballpark. That's why independent teams try to get guys who used to play baseball that need a job and advertise and market them. So that makes sense. So happy for him. I was just hoping he'd be on a major league roster. Mark Kolosvars, Kolosvari is signed to my deal with the Red Sox again. Uh, the Red Sox have him and Hernandez, and it's like, okay, they already have a set with Wong and Maguire, so this is organizational depth. Chad Wallach is staying in Anaheim on a Miley deal, but as I've mentioned before, when you got Logan O'Happy, who they really like, but he got hurt last year, and they, they do the whole Matt Tice catcher experiment. They're still doing that. He's going to have to be in AAA. Ariel Juardo staying in KBO. Padres a cut. Reliever Michael Baez, or Michelle Baez, and Jorge Ona, the outfielder. Paulos Espino is going to the Blue Jays. AJ Alexi is going to the Twins. I think he's on the Twins before. Miley Deal, Connor Capital to the Reds. The Yankees have traded Espon Florial to Cleveland for Cody Morris. That gives his Cleveland another good defensive speedy outfielder, which they have so many of. They don't really have great bats in the outfield, and the Yankees just don't have space on the roster. Jonathan Arau, who's a former Red Sox and Mets utility player, to name some team. His sign of mind deal with the Dodgers. If there's injuries, he can definitely see times this year. Chad Smith signed my deal with the Mets. Ricardo Sanchez is staying in the KBO. Cody Ponce is going to Japan. Texas Rangers signed Ilya Hernandez, Andrew Knapp, and Derek Hill. Again, I only see Andrew Knapp playing if there's injuries as a backup catcher. And Derek Hill, if there's injuries in the outfield, and Hernandez is a reliever. You know, it's whatever. Reds signed Brett Kenny my deal. Dodgers to DFA Brian Hudson. The White Sox DFA Dylan Cronin. The Reds have brought back Buck Farmer on a $2.25 million deal. The UFA Bubba Thompson, who they recently just got from the Royals, who was barely played in the major leagues. Angels have also picked up Francisco Mejia. Now, he, I never understood why the Rays cut this guy, because he used to be a top prospect for his bat between San Diego and Cleveland, and they decided they didn't want him. Now, Tampa Bay doesn't really have a starting catcher, which I think is stupid. And now he's going to be fighting with Chad Wallach to be the backup with Matt Tice. Like, because they like Logan O'Hoppy. So there's way too many catchers on that team. Pedro Rodriguez is now going to be the head, the hitting coach for the Padres. Because we all know that Mike Schilt got hired and he lost a lot of coaches when, you know, Bob Melvin left. Joe Kelly's wife got a Porsche the other day from Otani because Joe Kelly gave his number up. So I thought it was interesting that... Oh, Ty's making all this money. They can give Joe Kelly a wife a car, even though Joe Kelly makes a lot of money. Dio Castillo, if they're like the wiffle ball pitch, who's been on Seattle, Tampa Bay, etc. So I don't mind deal with the Rangers, and I feel like he 100% will make the team out of the spring training or pitch this year because they lost Stratton and Will Smith and, and Chapman and all these other guys. Now, Mitch Garver's had a two-year, $24 million deal to be in Seattle. He's replacing the DH role of this team. That they need because he's, he never stays healthy. He's not a great defensive catcher. And with uh, Kyle Riley being one of the best offensive catchers in all of baseball, I, that's going to mean that if Mitch Carver does play, it's once in a blue moon at that position. And at the same time, looking at the the catching depth, they have Zevi Zavala. Like, that's the only, like, catcher-catcher. And that's totally fine as a backup catcher. Mitch Garver is definitely going to be their DH because they're they're you're not they they trade Col- Jared Kalenic, Teoscar Hernandez is a free agent so they're missing some thump in the lineup and they just traded Suarez at third base so again they're missing a lot of thump in this lineup and that will help them out. Kevin Kiermaier is staying in Toronto on a one year ten and a half million dollar deal and joining him is Isaiah Kanafaleffa on a two year fifteen million dollar deal. I don't know how I, IKF who's a utility player. 90% of his career, there has been str- stretches where he started a lot of games for Texas and won a gold glove at third base. Cool, the former catcher, or play for the Yankees, but it's a lot for a utility guy. Now, obviously, that doesn't rule them re-signing Matt Chapman, but IKF will probably line up some days at third base, second base, 
Don't ever want to see him at shortstop. You can line up at first base and don't want to see him in center field because they got Kiermaier. So for now, you still want those third basemen. For now, but between Santa Schneider and Espinal and my guy and Biggio, you know, there's there's a lot of guys in that infield. Because obviously only Big, uh, you know, Bichette and Guerrero are set at those two positions. So again, I'm glad the Blue Jays did the Kiermaier signing, even though we didn't play every day. Was because that will keep Dalton Varsho and George Springer at a center field on a regular basis. That's what I'm hoping that that happens there. The dude never stays healthy. Martin Maldonado has gone to the White Sox on a one-year, four million dollar deal. I you like you want this move because he's one of the best defensive catchers in baseball. Gold gloves. His nickname's Machete. He can throw runners out. He handles the pitching staff, and he's one with the Astros. And he's been around the block plenty of times as a starting catcher and a backup. But the whole point of getting Corey Lee from the Astros was because he's like a catching prospect who didn't have room. There was no room for him in Houston because the last two years, Maldonado was there. And the White Sox, it looks like they're not really giving Corey Lee the starting job in spring training. And we all know Maldonado can hit. He bats ninth. In a lineup that has the Astros, where you have Tucker and Brantley and Alvarez and Bregman and Altuve and now Jose Abreu, like, you get all these guys in your lineup that you can hide this guy at the bottom. The White Sox lineup, they don't know who's going to play second base. They don't know who's going to, if Makata's going to be healthy to play third base. They don't know who's playing right field. So, like, there's not a lot of power in this lineup, not a lot of offense for you to just be like, okay, second base, right field, and catcher again. Three positions the Sox can't seem to figure out. Going to give you zero. Well, then now it doesn't help you. You know, that's the wrong thing. And then they also just got Max Stass the other week, who, again, used to be an Astros backup third-string catcher. So they're going into spring training with three Astros former catchers. I'm disappointed. I want to see what Corey Lee offensively can do in a full season. Because we know Stassi can't hit. We know Maldonado can't hit. Like, come on. Josh Salvin signed a deal with the Twins. I feel like that's a good pickup. He's been, he's been a pretty good reliever. Dominican Republic prosecutors are summoning Wander Franco for questioning. So... No idea if he and Julio Hurrias are ever going to come back to play Major League Baseball. One's domestic violence and one is child, you know, you know, minor stuff dealing with when, dealing relationship with minors. Uh, Dylan Axelrod, former White Sox pitcher, and he pitched for Team Israel, which I didn't know he was Jewish in the past. Supposedly was Angels like pitching coordinator with this Buddy Carlisle guy, which I didn't know about because I don't have both their cards, but it's cool to know that. Apparently, the Angels let him go because they were so bad, and obviously, they changed the whole entire staff with Nevin for the most part. So, the Tigers now are hiring him as their pitching coordinator. So, I'm happy for him. He gets to continue to be a coach. I appreciate that he pitched for Team Israel. It just means he's not going to travel with the team. He's not. He's like more of a, a front office thing. White Sox have also picked up Tim Hill on a one-year, $1.8 million deal. He's been injury-prone. has been eh. But if he pitches well enough in the first half, the Sox will flip him like they did with a bunch of relievers at the deadline this year. And Evan Phillips, the corner infielder outfielder from the Pirates, at one of the teams he played for. So I might do with Atlanta. Organizational debt is not going to really play that much. So, yeah, that doesn't matter. Now, eight teams combined for a record $209.8 million in luxury tax. The Mets leading the way with 100, 100, 7,8193. The Padres with 39.7. The Yankees 32.4. The Dodgers 19.4. The Phillies 6.98. Blue Jays 5.5 million. Braves 3.2 million and the Rangers 1.8. It's a lot. And rest in peace to Ryan Miner. Passed away age of 49, the former one time Oriole at Expo. Had a 177 lifetime average, five homers, and 27 RBIs. He only played a few years. He was um, a college basketball player and he played in the NBA too. Eight Big Eight Conference Men's Basketball Player of the Year when he played for Oklahoma Sooners, earned ABCA Rawlings High School All American Baseball Team. Was in the College World Series, had College World Series Championship in 1984, and is remembered as one of the players, is remembered as the player, excuse me, the player who started in Cal Ripken's place when he decided to stop playing with the Iron Man streak that he passed through Garrig and stuff, and he continued for it to go on. That he was the guy that played in there because he was projected as a lottery pick in his junior, but went back for his senior year and was drafted in the second round by the Sixers. After playing the Sixers, he's like, nah, I'm never going to play because All Star Stackhouse and veteran Clarence Words, Weatherspoon are playing. So obviously he stopped playing for the Sixers and he played in the minor leagues back in whatever the Continental Basketball Association was and went back to Baltimore because 
obviously in college, he's third team All American and a Big A player of the year and a two time first all team being a small forward. Because he was 6'7, so he's tall enough to play. Obviously, originally he was drafted by the Mets, but never signed with them, went to the Orioles, and obviously played in the minor leagues. Then was traded for all star reliever Jorge Julio at one point. Then he played with three different organizations after since with Atlantic League team. And he was joined the Lan the Lancaster Barmasaur in the first ever season, so he have his first home run. He has the most on the team and tied for third in the league that year when he played for them with 26 homers and 99 RBI. Then when he retired from baseball, he went to coach at independent ball, then became the hitting and infield coach for the York Revolution. Then he was in the started in the similar capacity for the Showbird, which was a class A team of the Orioles. Then he went to Class A again to minor league, then promoted to Advanced A. Then he returned back to the Showbird for four seasons and then becoming the Frederick Keys manager. Then he was the Keys manager when he finished in 19. It was the worst since 2004, so his contract wasn't new by the Orioles. Then the Tigers actually picked him up where he managed the Gold Coast League in 2020 and 2021. His twin brother, Damon Minor, was also a minor league, a major league player for the Giants. They were at Oklahoma together. Unfortunately, he died of colon cancer. That's what took him. So screw cancer. And he was at least elected into the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame before he passed away. Now let's end on a happy note. Happy trails to Jelton Simmons. 34 is pretty young for a player. I will say this. The former guy from the Netherlands, you know, like Caraco, where he played for internationally. We all remember him coming up with Brave as like world-class offensive player winning four gold gloves. Two with the Braves and two with the Angels. And then obviously the pandemic season didn't go well for him at that point. And then he bounced between the Twins and the Cubs. But yeah, this dude was, as you call it, the best defensive player you could think of shortstop. Like, it was like, yep, he is literally what you would consider a, a, one of the best defensive shortstops that I've ever seen play. So I he played for the Netherlands in 2013 World Baseball Classic and the 17 and the 2023. So I still think that he could have still been playing. But the problem is when you're a glove first player and you finish 70 career home runs and only 440 RBIs and you only bat 263, you don't want to go through the grind to keep signing minor league deals in the hopes that you'll make a team as a backup utility player. I wouldn't do that too if I were him. And specifically when you've been a starting player you, and, and you've been in this league for more than a decade. So, sad to see him retire early. Sad to see that he went from an everyday shortstop to bouncing around and being a backup. But we all remember this, is that obviously the, Bra the Braves traded him to the Angels. And uh, that's really what it is. So, But I hope he's good mentally because it says in 2021, he uh, he actually, when he opted out, to the 2020 season due to depression and suicidal thoughts. So, like, I hopefully everything's good for him. So, happy trails on your long, on your 10 plus decade career in the big leagues, World Baseball Classic career, and four gold gloves. So, Joe Simmons, rest in peace, Ryan Miner. Thanks for listening to week eight of the Hot Stove Edition, ending the 2023 season, going into this year's 2024 season. Uh, you know, move, uh, MLB observations. Runner J Block, I'm Raider. See you guys next time.